Hey everybody, um, I thought that I would um, attempt to show you how I do these um, rhythm play along videos and I am so not an expert. I've been doing it for three days. Um, but I will show you how I've learned to do them, watching other people do them and learn from them. So I'm gonna be quick. So here's how it goes. Oh, you're gonna need PowerPoint, I tried it in Google Slides, not nearly as useful, helpful. So hopefully you have PowerPoint, um, QuickTime, or some kind of screen recording program, and a video creating program. I use iMovie. So those are the three programs you need. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we go. Don't mind my uh, very messy desktop here, but I'm going to open PowerPoint and I uh, have a video here that I've started, so I figured it would be a good way to show you. Um, from a blank slide, um, I just picked a background that I um, had apply with an image that I had applied to every, uh, to every slide. So if you just right click on the slide and click format background, and you can go to um, picture or text texture fill and then just click on insert a picture and you can go to your desktop and find it or your computer and find which picture you want and so I already have this one that's here but if you click apply to all then it will put them put that background on all of them okay so then of course I gave it a title and um, and then I actually just duplicated that slide after I created it so that it was the same as the first one and then just deleted this text here and put on my notations used so that um, I'm going to delete that one now, but so that when I switch from one to the other, uh, all of this just stays in the same spot. And then um, I just am writing which notes I'm using or symbols so that, you know, of course, everybody knows what those are before they decide to show it or not. Then these boxes here are just uh, insert uh, shape. So then you can just pick a box, a square and make your one shape that you want, which is how I did how I did this one, right? And then just make sure that it's clear or white with a white background. Once you create, once you make it, you can just click here on shape fill and pick, pick whichever color you want it to be. And then mine have this little blue outline, which you can have that or don't have that. And it just did that when I made the very first one. So I uh, just left it. So they've all had that. Then after you've created the box, then you'll need to put the notes in. The notes that I used were from the font called um, Music Sync, I think is the name of it. If you Google it, Music Sync is what it's called. Of course, it's not going to show up, and I didn't like look for it ahead of time for you guys. Um, but I could look for it right here really fast. Sorry. Hopefully, you can fast forward through this. Uh, music, music sync is the name of it right here. So you can go online and download that. And then you'll definitely want the character map. And if you just Google music sync character map, it'll give you the codes for each letter and what notes it um, translates into. Okay. So once you have that installed, then you just um, click insert and you're just going to use a text box and with what with whatever letter that you want n is eighth notes i do know i have that one memorized <laughs> um then you just tell it that you want it to use that font um and there it made it for me and of course i will need it to be bigger and so whatever size you want it to be then you just would drag it inside of your box okay and um, definitely utilize copy and paste once you have them, once you have them up. Um, so anyway, then if it's if it's going behind for some reason, you can right click it and say, um, bring to front, bring to front, or send back or whatever. Just basic layering. So that's for my title. Then for the first page of actual notes, um, you're just going to create four boxes or three boxes or eight boxes, however many are going to be in your measure and however many measures you're going to have on each page and create 
what are going to be the first beats of your song. Um, and I've included one to ready go, which I know a lot of people do that. And I know that as a teacher, that's helpful so that the kids are ready to go. And so of course you'll have, um, you know, four slides. Each slide basically is a different beat, which is what makes this so, um, tedious, but also what makes it so amazing. <laughs> um, so of course I have one here, one, two, so that it shows when I, when I advance the slides, it has one, two, ready, go. Then, once it's actually time to highlight the beats, then you just have to, each box you have to select, and you have to go to Shape, Fill, and pick whichever color you want it to have. Um, oh, but before you do that, sorry, this is where the professionals would have not made this mistake. Before you highlight this box, definitely right-click Duplicate this, eight times right one so because it has eight beats for this slide so you would duplicate it um you know so that there's there's some shortcuts on my mac it's command shift d for do for um the shortcut i don't remember what it is on a on a windows computer but um anyway or you can just right click and click duplicate and it will make it for you so that you have them all and they're all blank because if you just do this one and turn it to yellow and then duplicate it then there's more steps on this on this slide you'll have to take this from being yellow and turn it to white and then turn this one yellow so I definitely learned that one you know after trial and error so anyway then you just go down down the row and each slide has a different uh, beat highlighted um, and as you go along you'll just fill in each one so that when you get done with all however many slides there are with beats for your song, then um, you're ready to go. Oops, I didn't make enough. So here's a perfect example of how I have an extra step right now of making that one white and then making this one yellow. And then if you um, decide to give hints down here of what's coming next, I like to do it three beats ahead of time, so I put mine on this slide so that it says next whatever. And I just use a text box and write next, and then I copy whatever my uh, next measure is gonna be. I just copy all of these. And what I did is I selected all of these, um, these uh, images here, because let's say that this was actually the, the next, the third measure was this. If you right click those all while they're selected, you can save them as a picture. And so what I did was on my desktop, I just saved this um, whole folder of ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. And I named them whatever they were so that I could use them again and again for those next options. Because then I can just insert a picture down here And it's the whole thing. So it's big, but I can make it smaller and see how now they're all one piece. So that kind of takes a little extra time, but it, it, it is super helpful. And what I've found is it's easier to just create my whole song first all the way through and then go back at the end and add these in. That's been faster for me. Um, so anyway, for the, for the next measure, you can duplicate this again, this whole page, if you want. And of course, this would need to not be highlighted. But um, then you decide, well, what do I want my next uh, next two measures to sound like? And so you go in here and change these if you want to be um, 16th notes or rests or you know whatever you've chosen to do. And, and then you just keep going through the whole thing. And then definitely, use slides over and over again, right? Because um, <laughs> if you did a different um, pattern on each measure, you will it will take even longer than it already takes. So definitely repeat. You can use your creativity, I'm sure, now at this point. But here's where um, I, I originally learned that you can save all of these slides as individual JPEGs and then take them into your video program. And I was doing that in, um, in iMovie. I did it on this one. So let me show you the difference. So you can kind of see the two choices you have. 
Um, in this first one that I did, I had each slide was a different image and I had to, um, and here's my song down here. And of course my title is up here and I had, you know, I had it timed out so that each, um, new slide would come on perfectly with the timing, which took me a long time because like some of them needed 0.6 seconds and some of them needed 0.7 seconds and it was just a total pain. So that's why I was like, oh, I can never make another one of these ever again because it takes so long. However, then someone else turned me on to this amazing idea because if you have the song playing somewhere else in your, um, in your sphere <laughs> of your being, then you can use QuickTime Player to go up and record it. And I'm actually using this program right now, so I can't show you how to do it. But in QuickTime, you just open it up and it says file, new, screen recording. And then you just press record and it will record whatever you have on the screen. And I then just put my slideshow into um, play mode. And then I turn on my song uh, somewhere else close by me. It doesn't record the audio um, when you just do a screen recording. so. It just um, is going to turn on my, um, it's just going to record what is on the screen. So I just make sure that I have the timing right and I go ahead and press record and then I'm going to do it right now. Like if it were recording right now, then all I have to do is advance the slides to the beat and it will, um, I haven't actually practiced this one, so you can hear this music a little bit, right? So if I wanted it to be like, one, two, ready, go, ta, ti, ti. That's not a very good place to start, but ta, ta. Oh, how did I do that? I messed up something <laughs> on my slides. But anyway, um, anyway, uh, I, I realized that if I could just played the slideshow and recorded the screen and I advanced the slides myself, and made sure that it was on beat, then it was actually much more accurate than me trying to place each individual image. So thank you to who that person, whoever said, just do it as a screen recording. And then once you have the screen recording, then you just go back to, it saves it to your desktop. Then you just go back to your, um, you go back to your video program. And instead of all those individual slides, now I, I mean, I did have two individual slides for my, um, for my title and my my notations page but then this is just that whole exact same video and as long as you time it up right with the music then it um as long as you did it correctly while you were recording your slideshow then i don't ever even have to really watch the whole thing because i'm like yes i know it was on the beat because i did it myself to the beat so the music file is definitely a separate file but um if you have some uh, basic video skills here just with even with iMovie which is super easy and user friendly um it just works so much better because i just i mark i line it right up with um with how i did it in the slideshow and it worked out perfectly then you just render it and upload it to youtube and yay it's all done so so i hope that was helpful ish sorry if i was a little repetitive and not really very organized i just thought Rather than try to be super organized, I would just see what happens. And this was one take. I think it maybe worked okay. If you have any questions, you can um, message me separately or, um, or yeah, message me separately. Um, but it was really, it's been really fun to make these. I'm kind of like addicted to it now, so I might make some more. Uh, anyway, have fun. Happy music teaching. <laughs>